News. Spur reported a 22% rise in earnings growth with revenue for the full year growing by almost 30%. Chief Executive Pierre van Donder is now in our Cape Town studios and joins us now. Pierre, thank you so much for joining us today. It does seem as though the shining star in your full year results is Captain Derego's. Tell us, what's the secret to that company's success? Well, I think we, we, we bought it uh, approximately a year ago. Oh, just over a year ago, and um, we always said to the market that we wanted to consolidate uh, the, the, the platform and we wanted to consolidate the model, uh, and it's been a good contributor to our overall results for the year. Although, you know, we must have a look at that the spur was still the star in the, in the greater spectrum of things. You mentioned that it is one of your biggest contributors to your bottom line. Revenue in that firm alone for the year increasing by more than 250%. Which kind of market are you approaching here with this, with Captain Derego's? Well, we, Captain Durago's traditionally has been in uh, what I would call the LSM sort of four to seven market, uh, and we're continuously focusing on those areas. It's been a what I would call a regional brand so, so, for, so far. Uh, what we our intention is obviously to get to it into a national footprint, uh, which is taking a bit of time, but we we're seeing good prospects for it going forward. Pierre, you mentioned there that you're looking at increasing your national footprint. I understand that you will be opening up seven new stores for Captain Derego's. Would you say this is your new growth area in the company? It's one of the growth areas in the company, but I, I think we must never uh, undermine the, the value that uh, the Golden Goose brings, which is Spur. Uh, and if uh, we're really excited about the openings of the Spurs that we have in South Africa over the next six months, and obviously our African expansion is now starting to get a bit of traction as well, uh, and Spur is the major contributor to, to profitability within our group. You mentioned Spur there as well as Panerotis, which in your numbers reveal that uh, the profit or the revenue there has been driven by promotions. How would you explain the science of profitable promotions? Well, I think it's, it, it takes on, on board the, the franchisee commitment to, to deliver those uh, value propositions to the consumer. Uh, and I must say, if one looks at our results and you look at our overall franchisee commitment to the strategies that we've done in terms of our weekday specials and our value drivers across all four brands, it's been a tremendous effort on their side uh, in terms of their top revenue line, which has obviously impacted our revenue line as well. Pierre, you also have a nice solid number of uh, membership co members to, or membership card holders to your Spur uh, loyalty card. How many active users are there exactly? Well, currently we have on the database, we have 1.4 million users. Um, you know, the, uh, not the trick, but the principle is to get them to use that card as many times as possible to drive frequency. But I must say, we've been very, very pleasantly surprised in terms of the uptake of that, uh, of the card. And our intention is to roll that out into Panerotis and uh, obviously enhance our currently John, Dory, uh, John Dory's card as well. Let's take a look at John Dory's revenue for the past year, rather flat and not performing as strongly as what uh, Captain Derego's did. What's your turnaround strategy there, or your, 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 how are you looking to increase revenue from that unit? Well, if, if you look at our, uh, the business increased 11% overall as a brand, so part of our principle and our, our platform was to consolidate that brand as well. We, it's a, it's a well-known fact, we, uh, a year and a half ago, we had certain difficulties within that group. Uh, which we've now uh, come over and so forth. So therefore, uh, we, we revamped nine stores this year with a new look and feel. We've introduced some great marketing initiatives which are bringing in the results. And even in the first two to three months of our new financial year, it's really delivering some exciting results for us. I understand you also will be opening up several stores, 26 in particular locally. How much money do you have in the kitty uh, for expansion projects? Well, that, the, uh, that expansion on the 26 uh, outlets is obviously driven by franchisee investment and uh, our balance sheet in terms of our cash holdings, one would always have a look at inquisitive uh, on the acquisition side uh, and at the same time to see where we can use our cash resource, which is on our balance sheet, to further enhance our earnings going forward. I understand you're also looking at entering the African market and expanding in Australia. What exactly is the secret to your success there? Well, I think Chris was saying it earlier on, uh, Africa is not a place for the faint-hearted and we've been in Africa for quite a few years now uh, in certain of the countries and um, we've developed a very good network with our franchisees there which are now starting to bear the fruit from a development point of view and opening new outlets. Uh, and again, having had a look at that and being very careful and prudent in our African growth forecast and as I think Chris pointed out, logistics is a bit of a nightmare in Africa. We're now starting to see the numbers starting to ramp up 
uh, and we're looking forward to the next 12 months with our African development. As far as Australia is concerned, it's, it was a bit of a flat year for us from a, a revenue point of view, however, being a small part of our business. But at the same time, we, we're seeing opportunities opening for us in Western Australia, which being Perth-based, uh, and we're starting to expand and we got, uh, we're hoping to open two uh, new franchises within Western Australia in this new financial year. Pierre, are you looking to launch an incentive to encourage franchisees to take up your offer similarly to what Taste Holdings has done? Well, you, you know, I think the National Empowerment Fund and the IDC and there are certain vehicles that one can drive where you can assist franchisees from a financing point of view. It's also driven by FASA, which is the Franchising Association of South Africa. There's another vehicle that one can have a look at preferential f funding, especially for new franchisees. So we look at Captain De Rigos, for instance, we're looking at those opportunities to drive growth and at the same time bring new franchisees into the marketplace uh, via the Captain De Rigos model. Pierre, just very quickly before we go, there's increased competition in the market with Burger King's recent entry. How are you reacting to that? Yes, uh, I think it's, uh, they've, they've obviously come into the market with, with uh, quite a bit of marketing and quite a bit of bang. Uh, let's see what they can deliver. I mean, they're a worldwide brand and there's no question they know what they're doing. Uh, South Africa is a highly competitive uh, restaurant industry and a QSR market as well. Uh, we've got some exceptionally good operators in South Africa, so it will be an interesting time over the next 12 to 24 months mm -hmm. to see what they can and what they can't do. But uh, I'm sure that they will have a place in the market and uh, let's watch it. It will be interesting times.